You guys uh, met at Emerson. Mm -hmm. uh, you're from Massachusetts. That's you're right. from Alabama. Nailed it. Yeah. Alabama. All right. Did your research. I knew it was one of the A's. Um, <laughs> Was it love at first sight? Film at first sight? What was it that uh, brought you two together? Well, Harry met Sally. We hated each other at first. <laughs> yeah, you know? or we tolerated each other. I think I had full blown hate. Yeah. <laughs> you weren't you were roommates, right? Yeah, no. we weren't roommates. We had one animation class together, uh, so we, we really became friends after college. But yeah, uh, it's, it's it's because we have very different um, classroom styles. You know, like I'm the kid in the back of the class who just wants to be working on his own thing. So I'm just kind of doodling and dreaming and and doing the bare minimum in class because. The projects were all I really cared about, and he's. And I'm the one who's like, very I'm not here active. to make friends. This this college charges like three hundred, four hundred dollars an hour when yeah. you break down the tuition. This is brutal. <laughs> Don't you dare have me watch a movie in class. That's the most expensive movie I've ever seen in my life. Which you know is not a great way to make friends. But also, but also so true. By the way. It's very <laughs> true. It doesn't cost too much. Yeah. Yeah. Also, this, uh, us describing ourselves is like it's still an encapsulation of our, our collaborative, like just our collaboration. This is how we work. I like to hole away and just do stuff and be like, everyone leave me alone. And yeah, you're like, I, I like why does this cost too much? Why does this cost so much? That's a little true. You get out of our room. We don't need you. How we gotta manage our time right and get <laughs> exactly. the creative flow working. Like this is yeah. this is valuable here. Yeah, we all have we both have our own version of neuroses. Um, but we we really hit it off because we both got a job at a summer camp teaching like middle school, high school kids how to do um, I mean, I, we weren't even teaching. We were just uh, supervising. We were the supervisors, yeah. which is like a weird job to give us because we just uh, got them in trouble and made the movies uh, weirder and more dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was so much fun. And we met during that period, or we really got to hang out during that period, and we, we made our first um, short film together, and that's kind of what kicked it all off. And our second short film was like kind of co-directed by kids. Oh, yeah, yeah. Remember? We, we like, worked we were, with the kids. Because uh, we like befriended some of them and then like yeah went and shot one of the shorts with them. Right, it was very fun. Stephanie and Cal. Yeah, Stephanie and Cal and, and a couple other people. Actually, um, we were recently at a event in New York City. Um, we were asked by the Lincoln Center to do a curated um, film series, and it was so much fun. But one of the nights, one of our campers was in the audience, and he like stood up and said, hi. Like, you were our, TA, you were <laughs> our PAs on the... Yeah, TA, teaching TAs, assistants. The yeah. TAs at summer camp. Like, um, oh, my God, you're an adult. I know, he's a <laughs> working like, adult. Yeah, yeah. He had yeah. kids yeah. and a beard. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, um, but it was, Collecting yeah. Social Security now. Yeah, yeah. Just, yeah. Like, <laughs> Being a full, full, full on adult. <laughs> going back to your first short film, uh, this is uh, all going into the origins of this wonderful collaboration that you two make. Uh, who approached you about making a movie first? Who asked who out first? I asked you to help do VFX on so, like some shorts and things, yeah. but and and in that era, uh, I did we I did a lot of commercial competitions, and I made an Old Spice commercial that I thought was really good, uh, and I did not win the oh. contest, but I still yeah. think it's good. I uh, don't know if they still do these, but they were really big when we when we were in college. Um, these ad agencies would be like, oh, we can get really cheap labor from students <laughs> if we do these competitions. We get like a hundred free commercials. And, and then we got to pick the best one. We got to put it out and we pay them like $5,000, which yeah. is like a fraction of what a commercial right. costs. With no residuals. Exactly. But in exactly. our brains, we were like, holy cow, the prize money is $5,000. Let's and, go. And so this is, we this did a is, lot of these. This was our, our, our school, like, our college jobs. We would just pump these out trying to f like uh, find money um, that way. I, I won a couple, you won a couple, and it's actually, it's how we got um, the money to buy our equipment. You know, I bought a camera because of it and he bought a, you bought your I iMac. I bought a camera too. You bought your iMac too? Uh, you did like I a, think so with he, a different did, he, he did a really good dibs commercial. It was pretty awesome. It's uh -huh. just like a guy uh, running into a kitchen and smashing all the plates and silverware and everything. And, and being like, we don't need bowls. We have dibs. You can eat ice cream with your hands. <laughs> yeah. And then my roommates get really mad at me for smashing yeah. everything. Yeah, it's good. Uh, and then he did an Etsy commercial that was like carefully animated, all made by himself in his bedroom. Mm -hmm. Right. And uh, um, But, it, it, you know, I think it does speak to both of our, our um, just our approach to filmmaking, which is very much like, what are the parameters? Yep. What do we have around us? What can we do with these things? Um, it, it's almost like a game. Um, and uh, and so when we first started working together, he asked me to do some visual effects on, on one of his... It's the burger one, right? You pull a burger out of yeah, your yeah. armpit. It's, oh, it's, it's so that dumb. like So I'm just going to pitch this commercial. <laughs> this is fun. Uh, it, it starts and, it's, uh, and I put on like normal deodorant. It's really powdery. Yeah. Uh, 
and it's like, oh, residue is evil. And then I use uh, Old Spice, and it looks beautiful, and there's beautiful animations that he did. And then I reach into my pocket and pull out a full hamburger, and then it just... Not the, your pocket, out of your armpit. My yeah. armpit, yeah. yeah. And I'm excited, and I take a bite, and then the voiceover just goes, hamburger? <laughs> use Old Spice. And that was the, the, it's like so <laughs> I just wanted the new slogan of Old Spice to be the word hamburger. hamburger. <laughs> I don't know why that didn't work. It, and, it, and it didn't win? <laughs> yeah, no, that one lost hard. I did a couple that lost hard. I did a Butterfinger commercial where I just, I just bit off my finger and ate a stick of butter and then had, like, blood and... You know, butter dripping down my face. That didn't sell. Can I candy. kindly ask you for the exclusives of these videos? I'm trying to track them down. I would love oh to see God. these and just like the, the the origins of of the Daniels. Or yeah. it's going to be such a good documentary. Yeah, series. Some of the, yeah. I don't think you helped on the Butterfinger one. You can tell the VFX are bad. <laughs> well, I know need, what Quan didn't touch. Yeah. Exactly. I needed Quan's help at that point. But yeah. your initial question was our first short film. Yeah. Uh, which I think Dan asked me to help because he had just gotten a new camera and it was sort of like, I want to film something silly to see how this camera works. So it was like after work, we went and kind of wrote and shot it in like an hour and a half uh, on the playground by his apartment um, starring yeah. us. And I was like, that was my first time where I was like, Dan Kwan's a pretty good actor. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna put him in a music video one day. <laughs> Marlon Brando of, of our time. Mm -hmm. That's what we, what we say. Um, Let's go to everything, everywhere, all at once. It's been a year. Coming up on South by Southwest, kicking off the weekend of the Oscars. You are the fifth directing duo ever nominated for Is that the, an Oscar. The stat? That's, that's, wow. That's Clayton for stat. any Oscar or for for in the directing category. Directing category. Oh, directing. Yeah, it was wow. uh, it was um, West Side Story. Of course. Mm -hmm. Then uh, Heaven Can Wait, Warren Beatty, mm -hmm. Buck Henry. Yeah. Wow. And then twice with the Coen brothers, uh, True wow. Grit and No Country for Old Men. No Country for Old Men uh, won Best Picture, so did West Side Story. Wow. So it's good, good just, company. Just good, just good. It's really good company. <laughs> wow. um, yeah, go ahead. What are you asking about? What's the. What's the most famous movie of all time where they Wizard go to Wizard of Oz? Yeah. <laughs> you know this really obscure movie. Yeah, yeah. You, can get, you can keep it yeah, in. Obscure movie. You heard it here first. Yeah. I don't know the name of Wizard of Oz. Um, no, I think I think Wizard of Oz had like four directors who like dropped on and off. They didn't collaborate. Yeah, yeah. But it was like in the old studio model, and I remember hearing that as like such a funny anecdote of just like that it used to be so much more of a machine where a director would come on and off and oh, there'd sure. be a whole crew of them right. and uh which is so kind of funny but looking at this now um you know obviously you made history there um one of 54 movies that have ever received 11 or more oscar nominations there have been 591 nominated for best picture in history wow. and you're one of 54 that have 11 or more top when 10% you, when, rock and roll that, take me back to take me back to day 1 of everything everywhere mm. and what your mind set is because at that point together you only had Swiss Army Man yeah. so what did you did, did you think it would get anywhere near where you are right now day one as in shooting as in writing or let's, start, let's, sh let's go shooting let's go, let's go shoot yeah. day one no, day one was unreal but it, it, it is like a good thing to focus on because I think it was just this moment where we'd been working for years on this movie and we couldn't believe it was actually happen. happening. And and day one, we were shooting the family in the audit. So we literally had Jamie and Michelle and James uh, Key, everyone. and Key at, all there. Steph Shue wasn't actually on the call sheet at the very beginning right. for the first day. But she wanted and to come. And she wanted to come, so she just came because she wanted to be there for the first day. Yeah. Um, we had a, this whole um, Hong Kong-style ceremony. You know, uh, Key and Michelle, they, they taught us that on every Hong Kong shoot, there's a um, a big ceremony, lots of fruit, incense. Everyone in the crew gets to put incense into the into the pot. And then there's a... a, a a suckling pig, and the tradition is you have, to, you know, everyone in charge, everyone who's steering the ship has to hold the knife and cut through the suckling pig. And one smooth, um, it's it's a, it, you know, it's a cooked pork dish, um, and yet it cuts straight through the body of the pig, um, and that would symbolize a smooth shoot. Um, and and so we did all of this with the whole crew. It took a long time. It's actually very funny. It's the opposite of efficient, but um, <laughs> yeah, our, our ad. And producers and me were all pretty stressed. We're like, this is worth it, right? This is yeah. worth it. Uh, let's it, get back inside. It was it was so fun and really beautiful. And and, and to Shiner's point, like uh, 
beyond even thinking about like Oscars or anything like that, like before you can even think about any of that stuff, you just have to think about what a miracle it is to make any movie that is a independent film that is not not coming from a franchise or from a studio um, where the very fact that you get to make it is the win. Um, there, I have so we have so many friends who are so talented with these incredible projects who are just constantly stuck in different versions of development hell and we thought we were going to be next you know this movie took so long to 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 get to where it was ready to to shoot because of cast schedules because of money falling through it was um it was honestly that that day was um, was was all we could have asked for at that point so this right here sitting here talking about the the historical context of our nominations and, and whatever is is um, surreal. I've seen thousands of Evelyns. We can access all their memories, their emotions, even the skills. But it instantly felt good, the movie. Like, yeah. like the, the, the very first read-through with the cast, we were like, this is good. This is the most fun <laughs> read-through I've ever had. And then yeah. like... Uh, and then the moment we started shooting, like I remember that first week, we would kind of go, we would step aside to each other, and the running joke became that we would just whisper to each other, like, "This is nonstop entertainment." <laughs> because, like, every shot we got, like we were like, "That was a, that was a that good was performance." Good. Like, holy that was cow, a good they're good. Yeah, exactly. like, so we're like. Yeah. I don't know if a movie can hold this much entertainment. You know, I, 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 I do want to give one shout out to the two people who who thought before we even started shooting, they thought this movie had like huge potential, uh, and it was it, both these conversations happened right after the cast read through. Mm -hmm. We were sitting in a room with the main family. It's you know James Hong, Michelle Yeoh, Ki Kui Kwan, Stephanie Shu, and us, and we're just sitting around and we read through the whole script for the first time. It's literally uh, less than a week before we start shooting because of schedules. We have no time to rehearse. This is the first time we're all in the same space. And the moment we're done, um, Key's wife, Echo Kwan, who just so happened to stay up all night the night before um, translating the, the script for us um, without our permission. She just did it because she's like, like adjusting the translations yeah, and stuff. Yeah, yeah, she read the first pass of our translation. She's like, this is not good. Could we can do better. Yeah, on. exactly. <laughs> um, and she came up to us and was like, this script has a very powerful, powerful soul. And we're like, okay. Um, and it's so powerful. It is sucking in all these other strong souls. And together we're going to make something very, very special. It's going to be very successful all around the world. <laughs> and, and, we're like, all right. Echo. Okay, Echo. Thank you. Um, uh, goodbye. <laughs> um, and, and, you know, it, she has a very spiritual way of looking at the world. And she filtered that into um, – into our process, like she brought that spirituality onto our set. She she rearranged our our equipment sometimes for feng shui reasons. You know, she was very much um, involved throughout all of it, and the, her words have have stuck with me ever since the movie came out. Because I'm like, of course she was right. She she knew way before any of us. We were making fun of her, and she was uh, right the whole time. And then the other person was uh, James Wyatt. Our personal assistant at the time who's also a writer and he's very talented um and you're probably going to be seeing him someday more in the future but uh he pulled he pulled me aside and was like do you think you're gonna win an oscar for this one and i was like <laughs> i like literally laughed in his face because you know he's my naive assistant who yeah. knows nothing about uh -huh. the industry and i and I, I i yeah i said i don't i don't i can't even think about that but that's very funny thank you um and then and then i walked away um but uh I, th I think that that reading now looking back on it was very special. The script reading, because the only reason why this movie works is because of this incredible cast. Um, whenever we get any sort of ensemble recognition for this movie, that's when I'm most proud because I feel like one of our uh, greatest achievement in making this movie was putting those humans together into one movie. And so I think that was present that first day we saw it, and now obviously they're being so you've rewarded hired for Echo. It. For a life now, right? Yeah, basically. Yeah, exactly. we fired James. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, our new. Yeah. Uh, she is uh, the She's, best. She is the best. I highly recommend. Just bring her to your set for vibes she, alone. She has you know? great hugs, and she also just like gives, like she's just very happy to just. Oh, oh my god. See everything. Like it's. She's the greatest cheerleader. I love mm -hmm. that you even know who Echo is. That's, oh, yeah, amazing. Echo yeah. is. She, yeah. she is like the bedrock of award season. Yeah, exactly. No one's <laughs> written about that yet. I will. Oh, um, you should. Yeah, That'd it's it's coming. <laughs> um, Michelle Yeoh, mm -hmm. sixty year old woman, looks twenty five. Yeah. So looks exactly the same yeah. as she did in nineteen ninety five. Man, it's just like <laughs> it, like I don't know. Isabella Rossellini gave her the potion in Death Becomes Her. She took it. There we we all we all know this. <laughs> 
I, I'll be honest, I have, I have dark days when I'm an Oscar pundit. I didn't think we would ever get to Michelle Yeoh. Mm. I wasn't, I, I didn't yeah. think we were going to get to it. Yeah. And we did. Yeah. It's here now. Talk about this dream of working with her. Tell me everything that's great about her on set. And then we'll get to the gossip. And then you get, yeah. yeah. And then tell me the bad. So, yeah. yeah. No. Uh, I mean, we, we're huge fans of hers and, uh, but she plays some pretty scary characters, and uh, I kind of had a thought, like, what if we meet her and she's a, she's more like the crazy rich Asians mom than she is, <laughs> yeah. you know, uh, sweet and gentle. Mm. And uh, and it was such a relief when we the moment we met her because she was like so sweet and funny and vulnerable and self deprecating, but also us deprecating and like us uh, deprecating. She is, was is making, that, making is that fun English? of us. That's yeah, what yeah. Yeah. She was teasing us like immediately for yeah. like our weird little script, but like it was uh, it was just such an exciting moment because uh, on one hand I could instantly see myself collaborating with this person and 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 having like such a fun time, but also I was immediately like, there's more to this woman than the roles she's been playing, and that's like as a filmmaker always just so exciting to be like oh I don't have to this isn't going to be that hard like that, I, all I have to do is capture this this energy right here at this table and audiences are going to be like this is new um, that being said Evelyn I'm still shocked sometimes when I see clips from the movie and I'm like reminded just how different Evelyn Wong is from Michelle Yeoh yeah. uh, and it, she it, did her work yeah it's in a lot of little subtle ways just like her accent actually is 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 shifted from you know her being from uh, Malaysia, she shifts it over to a more Asian American immigrant uh, accent, and her body language is so um, stiff in a way. In a way that, like when when now that we we've spent a year promoting this movie with her, when we go back and we watch clips from the movie, we feel like oh, she really did transform herself for this film, um, in the big ways and the small ways. Um, this because this role is is so it was very fun for us because every. Every other day, she would come up to us before a take and say, guys, boys, she always calls us boys, boys, yeah. you, uh, I've been working in this industry for a very long time, and what you were asking me to do, I have never done before, but I'm doing it for you because I trust you, but if this movie turns out bad, I'm killing you both. <laughs> <laughs> and she meant it. And she yeah. meant it, yes. And she can do <laughs> she, it. Exactly. I don't know, maybe she didn't. Uh, <laughs> it was terrifying, but also it was like she would say that and she'd be very vulnerable with us in that mm -hmm. moment. And the moment you say action, she just does it and kills it. And you don't even sense any hesitation or you don't sense any um, any fact that this was the first time she did something like this. Mm -hmm. And I, I, to me, as uh, as a director watching th that um that kind of bravery in, in an icon like her was um, was really rewarding and very inspiring. I can only hope that when I'm her age, I'm still taking these kind of risks. Um, um, I don't know what that's going to look like. Yeah. But yeah, I, hope that, I hope at yeah. her age, I can lift my leg. Yeah, like, exactly. Higher yeah. than it requires to walk. Exactly. Um, Jamie Lee Curtis was here uh, singing your praises and, and Michelle Yeoh's praises. And uh, she said something I wanted to, she wasn't a thousand percent sure. She says that she's fairly certain it was Michelle Yeoh's idea to make the rock scene silent. Yes. Is that true? That was it was, Michelle. it was her, uh, I feel like. Oh, she was encouraging it. We, she just yeah. like, we were yeah. like, we're not sure. We might add voices. And she was like, that's a bad idea. And right. we were like, but like, what if the audience, you know, gets bored? She's like, no. It, so it, she was more the curator of the idea where she like bullied us that like our hesitation yeah. was unwarranted. Yeah. We had two options. We're like, worst case scenario, we'll add subtitles. So we're going to record. The reason why it came up was because we asked her to record the subtitle. Or record, oh. record, the, record the audio. The and voiceover. she was like, I don't yeah. want to. It should be subtitles, but I'll do it. But you're wrong. And, and she gave a really lovely... A explanation did, did, it, did it poorly too. on purpose? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, like, yeah, like, uh -huh. so in this universe, ha ha ha. Um, it, but no, she, she uh, said. Uh, she said I, when I read the script, I always imagined this would be like a Zen garden. Just, just. Mm. She's like, we should just hear nothing but wind, and we're like, okay. I think she's right. <laughs> yeah, and that I think that even informed where we shot it because we hadn't shot it yet. Right. And like we had talked about mountaintops and like beautiful vistas and stuff, but there was something about like. Zen Garden made me think about rocks and sand, and, and deserts, like yeah. and deserts, and uh, and then our our cinematographer picked out the place that we were gonna go. Um, yeah, but I mean that, that's the one thing that was really surprising about her is I think she um, she she talks about our movie and and in a way that kind of um, diminishes what she did. 
if that makes sense. She's like, oh, this movie's crazy. I don't know what's going on half the time. Um, but then you look at her um, script, and literally there are these little tabs, and they go all the way up the top, all the way down the bottom, all the way, th- uh, all the way down like the side, all the way down the bottom. Color-coded to color universes. Coded. And so it's literally the whole thing looks like a frilly dress of, of notes that she was taking for the movie. And and you you have a conversation like that, and you go, oh, Michelle, you knew exactly what this movie was. And you are just kind of playing it cool. Michelle, you was that kid in class. I didn't study for the test, and they got 100. Exactly. And you're like, exactly. The irony is that was Dan at, in college. Really? Yeah, his final, <laughs> he would turn in his final project, and it'd be so good. And I was like, what? You were that kid who never talked. Like yeah. you, you were just sitting over there and you were good at it all the yeah. time. Yeah, I don't like that Michelle. kid usually. I know. I'm sorry. See, that's why he didn't like me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, but I, I, I think it's like incredible how, how much she truly understood this movie, especially when you think about many people her age um, who have read the script and also have seen the, the finished movie don't understand it like it, it she was i can't imagine anyone else doing this movie not only because of her unique skill sets but also just because of her personality and just her her vision of the world like i think in a lot of ways this film um connects with her in um in a way that shouldn't have connected with someone her age i think and, and i'm really thankful for that i also just want to say that like she was the first person we cast First person, uh, to say yes. yeah. first person to say yes and then like you know to echo Quan's point about the movie having gravity like she played a, p- a big part in who else came on board like Jamie came on board because she wanted to work with Michelle uh, but also like Michelle really fought for our casting choices some of which weren't like the most famous person we could go out to but like she really believed in Key and Stephanie yeah. and she like also believed in like the Marshall Club, who did a lot of the did the choreography, who were kind of an untested group of uh, you know YouTubers, and like she she fought and believed in our scrappy, not particularly the obvious version of how to get a movie made approach. And uh, yeah, there's a reason why she's the executive producer on the movie, actually. Yeah, yeah mm-hmm. but she like yeah, it was, which is just the ideal scenario with a lead actress to be like, oh, you're a collaborator. You're a part of the fabric of this movie. Part of this ride. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Stephanie Shu has, she said she's been pitching this to you, so I need to get the sh- answer straight up right now. <laughs> okay, great. Uh-oh. Um, you guys never had a rap party. Yep. Uh, and she would like to do this the second week of South By, the week after the Oscars, because she will be there with the movie that's premiering. And she thinks... <laughs> That would be a great time for everyone to mm. ascend onto into Austin mm. the week after the Oscars and do a rap party. Is Variety going to uh, sponsor it? To Sorry. Austin? <laughs> yeah, she oh. wants to do Austin. Oh, yeah. hard pass. <laughs> no way, man. She's, she's a big dreamer, but I, it's the second so, the second week of South by is also chaos. That's, uh, what, that's, that's when that's when the it music is so people hard come. To get, yeah. um, also, like yeah. this cast and crew is so it means so much to us, but we're spread out so far. Yeah. Um. I. I uh, we we keep talking about doing one. Um. But then the the caveat I I say is like we've done like seventy ca- rap parties. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's it feels like we like. But not with everyone. You not know? with everyone, yeah. but like I, I, I'm really glad we've gotten to celebrate with a lot of our cast and crew at different times in different places, right. and we're so lucky. It's one of the upsides of the fact that this movie came out a year ago and we're still talking about it is that different people get to come in and celebrate with us every once in a while. Yeah, but we didn't get to celebrate with all the PAs. The I'm, I'm feeling like crew, this is something you want you know. to happen, yeah. so... I just want to sing the praises of the yeah. celebrations we did have. Right. We had a crew oh. screening. The actual world premiere was so before South by. So, TBD? Oh, oh uh, it's... I want to do but, 70 or do, more. Yeah. 70, okay. Yeah, <laughs> I think she's dreaming too small is my point. All right, uh, all right yeah, awesome. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Let's go back to the Oscar luncheon that just happened. Um, yesterday, yeah. Yes, yesterday, time of recording, we are... Sitting, uh, and I, you guys, they split you guys up because they can't have you guys sitting next to each other. You act up too much. We've been yeah. fighting. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I just had a little peek. Uh, you, Daniel Kwan, mm. sitting at a table with Tom Cruise, <laughs> Michelle Williams, and Roger Deakins. Yeah. Like, no, like, just... <laughs> is, there, is there a bit of imposter syndrome sometimes, or do you just like, or just like... 
Whatever, man. Like, I deserve this. Yeah. This makes sense. <laughs> I got stuck at this table. <laughs> yeah. You're like, uh, no it, other, you nothing exactly. else is available. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> it's so funny. The The imposter syndrome um, comes in waves, and it's mm-hmm. been coming in my whole life, but especially this year. Um, every month or so, it hits me. I'm like, wait, what the hell am I doing here? Yeah. Um, and, then, and then, you know, of course, the pendulum swings, and suddenly I feel very comfortable because I'm surrounded by people I, I believe in and I care about, you know. The I fact care that, about you, too. Oh, thank you. Yeah. I, was, I was specifically yeah, talking pointing, about you. You pointed right exactly. at me. Exactly, yeah. It. I felt it. Um, but the fact that all of us got our nominations at the same time, we're all first-time nominees, like, th- that to me, like, e- as much as the um, imposter syndrome wants to sink in, that always kind of swings me the other way to say, like, oh, I'm with my friends. This is actually um, bigger than me and, mm-hmm. and, and really special. Um <laughs> so honestly, yesterday I think I was too much in too much of a dream state to feel anything psychological. It was all embodied. Um, exper- the, the yeah, my body was leading, and so I was just kind of listening to Tom Cruise to explain to me how they stuck cameras onto planes. You know, it was it was my fault. I asked him like, I have so many questions about how you guys made that movie. And he's like, I'm here. Ask away. <laughs> I was like. Okay. Do you, do you feel uh, satisfied with the answers? Like, do he give you enough? Uh... I mean, he. I, I. I. learned a lot about his entire life. <laughs> he's been flying since he was like eighteen or something like that. Of course, and, he yeah. Is. Of course. Yeah. Um, and so that was incredible. Talking to Michelle Williams was amazing. Um, and then Roger Deakins, who obviously is just a hero of ours. And you know, I, I feel like yeah, the first time I. The, one of the first things I really appreciated about him was I. You know, obviously, I was in. I was in college when. Um, uh, assassination of Jesse James came out and everyone was just being holy crap the way that Roger shot that was incredible mm-hmm. um, but around the same time also Wally had just come out and I remember um, I was in uh, the theater watching the credit scroll and uh, Roger Deakins has a uh, credit on that movie he was consulted he was he was the consulting DP I think he was the first consulting DP on an animation animated feature ever and it really stuck out with me because did he do that on How to Train a Dragon too he did that on How to Train yeah. a Dragon as well both incredibly shot films but I remember watching Wally um, without knowing this beforehand but watching it in the theater and be like oh my god these shots are amazing there's like they they have the the lens information right like the the way the the it's flaring it feels it's incredibly accurate I, I just remember some of the movements just felt so cinematic and grounded and so anyways I could talk about Roger Dickens for a yeah. while but it was he was funny because I I'd ask him a question and he'd be like yeah and then the conversation would die <laughs> yeah <laughs> and, and, but like you know he I, I don't think he like really cares you know anymore he's just having fun and uh, he was. Uh, very sweet, but we did not have much to talk about, I guess. <laughs> yeah. My single favorite moment of the Oscar luncheon was the, from my view, it was so great to see Kiyu Kwan get his name called. Mm. <laughs> I missed and that. I didn't he, see it. And he jumps so high and he's just so happy <laughs> all the way up. And even when he gets up there standing, he's still like just happy to be. <laughs> I'm like, be happy about things the way Kiyu Kwan is, mm-hmm. there's, and uh, there's it's a superpower. I don't. I, I think if other people try to do it, they'll hurt themselves. Honestly, yeah, there, there's yeah. There, there's no there's, you can't contain that. Yeah. But you had me. I had him here on on the podcast earlier in the season. He made me cry, obviously, because mm-hmm. that's what he does. Yeah. The, the key sweep TM that your table at uh, Critics <laughs> Choice Awards. I was happy you guys said that the key sweep is yeah. is, is happening. Can you talk about this? Uh, we're called the resurrection. Uh, Kiyu Kwan's comeback I mean, story. I don't know what else to say about it that hasn't been said. That, you know, I, I think at the end, um, no matter what happens to Ki, um, he's going to be the same person, which is already, I think, just um, such a beautiful gift to himself and to the people around him. So worst case scenario, he finds himself in another hole. No one start casting him again. Uh, of course, I, this is never going to happen. This would be absurd at this point. But I was just thinking about the, the resilience that man has is kind of um, unstoppable. I can't imagine, um, even if he disappears, <laughs> I can't imagine he'd stay that way. You know, um, and I, I think the fact that he has someone like Echo. You know, you're, you're talking about how Echo has Echo. been this. Uh, you know, someone in the background just uh, for um, our entire production and our entire. Um, you know, press run, but I think she's been that way for Key his entire life, or at least their life together. And I think 
as long as those two stick together, he's going to be great. And so, uh, and, and, and he knows that. that. The beautiful thing about Key is now that he's gone through that really hard time of just feeling lost and unwanted in this industry, um, he really knows the value it comes from, the value in his life comes from his wife and not from the awards, not from this recognition. This is all nice, but like when he says that, you know, the thing that matters most is to him is his wife. I think he really means it, and so I'm. I'm I only say this because there's nothing else to say yeah. about him. But like, I, I do think it's at the core. I think of it comes him. from Daniel Shiner. Yeah. That's what I think. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. I, I think it's. I think <laughs> you're the real one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Uh, well, it's all been about you. He does say he loves me every once in a while. And I, <laughs> not not <laughs> once so in a while. Happy often, every single time. Yeah. Often and effusively. So I love these guys. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, I think um, it's a. It's a dream come true to to take talented people and show the world that they have more to offer. And yeah. I would love it if our movie inspired more, you know, filmmakers and producers and financiers to think outside the box of what, you know, who's already been in a hit movie last year and let's have them play that same thing again. Yeah. Um, there's so many key Kwans out there. Yeah. Like I go want, find them. Let's do more. Let's do this. Let's do this more often. Like people, there's so many talented people who it's are. Not people we could resurrect. And aren't just allowed like... this kind of chance, and everybody wins. You know, like I'm so lucky. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, this it. year in general has been really great for unexpected performances. I, my mind obviously goes to um, Brendan Fraser, who is just an incredible, sweet man. Who I hate him. Yeah. Oh, I just, <laughs> You're the like, only one. Okay, that's good. I hate him. Just because, <laughs> like, he's almost as awful as Colin Farrell. I know. Yeah. Him yesterday. Just, just shockingly I charming. Know. Oh my god. <laughs> like they're just like, they're, like this is the year of nice. Yeah, nice guys um, finish first. Nice people. You know, nice but like, people. Yeah. But back to the idea of just like, like surprising performances. <laughs> I, I think about, you know, um, Dolly. She's just, her performance is incredible. And she it's per, she's the perfect person to play that role. And I can't wait to see what comes of her. Like, you know, I, I, I met her at one of these um, dinners. And I asked her, like, what? Because I, I didn't actually do the research. Like, what, what has your history been before this? Um, and she's like, I've never really done anything before. And I was like, that's incredible. And I think that's what we're talking about. We're like, you know, take chances on people and find the, 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 the untapped potential um, out there. Cause there's just so much, there's so much out there. Yeah. Cool. Got some, uh, like a little last bit of question, just uh, real quick though. Uh, you signed a big deal with universal five <laughs> years. Uh, cheating on E24, I see, but it's fine. It's, it's fine. It, 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 we, we, you know, you can go make all the movies you want. Is it cheating? Or it's more like uh, it's like polyamory because yeah, we, yeah, we yeah. still have a TV deal with A24. You know? right. yeah, we, yeah. we can have yeah, we can have our well that, 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 love. that was, yeah. so <laughs> that was gonna be my question. So your TV deals with A24, your mm. film deals with Universal. So what are you making? Uh, video games with someone else. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we're gonna focus on. Uh, yeah, uh, video games. Uh, no, I don't know. In the, yeah, it's funny. In the TV world, um, well, our brains don't really think in terms of TV. Like We like these very self-contained stories, and um, that's what we hope to do with, with our feature films for the rest of our careers. But with TV, you know, we had a couple friends reach out in different capacities and ask us to come on as EPs and maybe do the pilot. And um, we said a yes to a bunch of them because um, we were excited about all of it. We saw the potential in all of them. Um, Thinking that you know, you know, some of them would fall to the wayside, or, or you know, that's how the, the, this world works. Everything is development, development hell. Yeah. Um, and then the movie came out, and everything's going now, and we're like a little bit like, well, okay, what's happening? This is um, like you're really busy for the next like for ten years, maybe. Yeah. Um, and so that's something we're grappling with. And then on the movie it's side, it's hyperbole. They're not yeah. all going. Yeah. But, you know, <laughs> if it, it feels that way, suddenly it's like, oh, we got to be careful careful with our time and not overcommit but yeah they're all luckily we're just supporting other people largely yeah you know and then um so yeah we bit off a little bit more than we could chew there but the um the so we on tv set just real quick so does that mean there's no everything everywhere series uh, of the, uni- of the nope. universe no not nope. yet De- not, <laughs> not just, yet you gotta or just n- sit and chew on how that movie made yeah. you feel okay yeah, 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 yeah. you know okay. um I, I, I did say I, I did say at one point I wanted to do like a, not really but we'll see if someone if someone else wanted to do this it would be fun an animatrix style um, anthology mm-hmm. series where it's just you get a bunch of animated anime director directors to riff on that world like I mean I don't know that'd be fun and I'm gonna be the other Wachowski sister who's <laughs> like no it's done no more sequels no more spinoffs um, let it live but uh, the nice it, thing about our movie is everything is a sequel to it. Right. Oh. If there's an infinite number of universes, then right. technically it's like Marvel. Nothing's ever really dead. <laughs> yeah, everything is connected. Um, and then on on the movie side, we um, we're trying to just 
yeah, spread out a little bit in different directions. There's there's a handful of projects, and they're all very different from each other. Um, I, 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 I do love it when a, um, an artist does something that feels very um, specific and distinct, and then their, their follow-up is feels like a pendulum swing. I, like, I can totally relate with that process. Um, while we were editing this movie, we were outlining a very small, a small movie, just like a little love triangle uh, movie that, um, who knows if we'll make it, but I'm very excited about it. So that that's one project that's like, that's just a, a pendulum swing, I'll say. Love triangle. Um, but then also uh, at one of these events, Questlove, who really loves our movie, he came up to us and said, don't do the Pivot album. <laughs> I knew exactly what he was talking about. It's but like, It's like every band, they have their hit. And then they pivot. And yeah. It's like, no, you guys, you guys stay the course, do the yeah. art. You've, you've, you found your you voice. You figured it out. You, yeah. You know? And and, and our I, other project is that. Yeah. Just no, Briti- no British biopic. Uh, yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Right. But Not our the, 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 I know exactly what he's saying, and I totally understand why he says it. But also, sometimes the pivot album is my favorite. So I'm like, but that's just that's just me. Like, so to me, I really because when I see an artist do it, I can I can appreciate it. And uh, like, uh, I think of you know Sufjan Stevens' Age of Odds is like like a ridiculous pivot album and it's probably one of my favorite of his but um, I know a lot of people didn't like it so <laughs> I feel like we're going to eventually make an album where people are like wait why did they do that and I'm like or sorry we'll make a movie that people will be so mm-hmm. confused by or an but, album yeah let's do music oh we'll do music that's the ultimate yeah. pivot just a yeah, different yeah. genre there we go um, or a different medium right um, but at the same time we have another project that feels more you know um, it's going to please Questlove more I think <laughs> Just for you, Quest. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, it, it almost feels like the overflow of everything everywhere. There's certain things and characters or, or ideas that just didn't fit into the movie that started to grow into something else. I hope it still feels very different, but it's going to be cut from the same cloth. So you're not going to tell me the title of this movie. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's, where, that's where we're getting at. I got no, it. Uh, we don't have I got it. it. Yeah, we yeah, had a good one. Yeah. <laughs> it was good. I'm sorry. You, uh, you want the headline, but we'll... Can we just make one up? Yeah. But, um, it's called... <laughs> The Variety Movie Podcast. <laughs> oh, <there you> <laughs> I'm sorry. sorry. No, we have nothing. You hold you yeah, to it. Yeah, exactly. Um, so uh, just the last two bits is uh, we have DJ and BAFTA next. Mm-hmm. The next big thing, next big stops for, for you guys. Um, are you guys going to both? Are you guys going to try, try to divide and conquer? Because there's two of you. Which yeah. is a rarity sometimes. They're, they're trying not to divide us, and we don't want to be divided either. I, I think it's like strong. You know, the fact that you said there's only five directing duos who've ever been nominated. It's like, um, it's it feels right to um, try to. Show a DJ up. actually, there's only been two. So yeah, you're that's even the third. Wow. Yeah. Wow. It was Coen Brothers, the other Co- one. Coen Brothers and um, and West Side Story. Oh. Uh, Warren Beatty and Buck were not nominated. At oh, damn. Kuwait, I think. Oh, okay. Like, mm. I'm fairly certain about um, that. So it, it just feels like, I feel like we are reminders to people outside of the industry that the, the filmmaking process is, inc- is incredibly collaborative. And mm. so it feels important for us to. Try to try to be together at most events if we can. Um, try to figure it out, especially these kind of events. Um, and we're so on, honestly so honored to be nominated for both. And so we're, we're going to try to make them both. We don't know if we will make the Baftas on time. We might show up a little bit late. I'm sorry, uh, England. I mean, it's, it's it's second to last. <laughs> you know, so you know. We can, um, right. yeah, it, it's the, just okay. Yeah, the just, original screenplay could be earlier in the night. Thanks so, yeah. for letting us know. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. But yeah, the, the uh, time difference is kind of crazy. To be in LA one night and London the next night is actually um, kind of crazy. impossible. Yeah. I've never. Yeah, it's all very foreign to us. Yeah. Uh, I've never paid much attention to awards. It's not like a. You, you weren't our... re- you weren't reading me daily. I'm like so sorry. When... Uh, <laughs> it's like uh, it's really. He's just a fan of you as a person. Oh, right. And, yeah. Yeah. I <laughs> like your vibe a lot. Yeah. Uh, I enjoy your vibe. Um, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, the, the the mentality I feel like that I've found in the last couple months that has been like helped me through it is uh, are just like given me like a, a lot of enthusiasm. Is that like we somehow got invited to the most exclusive film school on earth? You know, mm. like these events are like. You can't buy this. Like, not only am I in the room with heroes of mine, I have like permission to approach them, and they they might know who I am. <laughs> like, it's not even. I don't even have to be like, can I have an autograph, Roger yeah. Deakins? I can yeah. be like, what's up, fellow nominee? <laughs> Let's talk shop. You know, so Raj. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> which got is, a guy like that. <laughs> uh, which is so hard. I'm still bad at it, but just like if I can get like one. Spoiler copy. alert: Roger Deakins is filming us right oh, now. Oh, what's up, right? Roger? <laughs> You're in disguise the whole time. <laughs> but if I can get like one conversation like that out of yeah. an event, I'm like, rock and roll. There we go. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. All right, and then the the. 
round robin really fast. Holy questions. These are, these are the fun ones. All right, good luck fast. All right. Uh, were you tempted to bring a universe that had Daniel Radcliffe writing Paul Dano and everything everywhere? How do we not uh, get any Swiss Army man? Yes, references? I wanted to do like five seconds of it. Does that make sense? It's okay. Yeah, I didn't want it, but I wanted them to have cameos, and that, but that didn't work out. You know, but like we love them dearly. Do you? Yeah. <laughs> Clearly I, I, not, not anymore <laughs> after, after this. Um, you guys have worked together. Answering for the other, if you had the power to give the other one, if you guys would break up for one movie mm-hmm. and give the other one a pairing with another director living, who oh. would you pair them with? You're pairing each other. Okay, mm, Quan would great. make one with Miranda July. That, that, that's what you would y- yeah, give yeah, him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would give want him July? to make like a dance piece, weird big Mike exploration of good. bodies, sexuality, and the human <laughs> experience. Like Just like uh, oh, something that maybe plays in museums. I don't know. The runtime can be anywhere from like five seconds to five days. I'm just yeah. curious what they would make. Yeah. I, I think you should do something with Jordan Peele, um, but take him back to his sketch comedy roots, and it, and he's in it with you, maybe. And it's with a, me? <laughs> yeah, and it's, it's it's a it's a weird um, sketch comedy feature film hybrid experiment. Yeah. Wow. I mean, I, uh, you guys have some work ahead of you. Yeah. yeah. Do you, you want a podcast yeah. exclusive? Yeah. I've been yeah. wanting to tell Jordan this story, and I've never gotten to tell him. Go ahead. I was cast in the pilot of of Key and Peele as a when I was like a aspiring filmmaker. My friend got me audition, uh, and then I dropped I dropped out uh, because we had to go do like a music video thing. Uh, and it was like a, I had like one line of dialogue and I was like what's Key and Peele I don't know what this is and uh, and then I became a super fan of the show but that sketch never aired so I, think I thought he was going to say I became a superstar and it didn't yeah. matter, <laughs> it matter it anymore matter. No, like now a, I'm bigger than a Key a year <laughs> later I watched the pilot of that show and I was like this is incredible and I was like I should have dropped that music video didn't turn out that good so uh, Jordan he's upset with you we so missed, I missed sorry, my chance I'm been, so been sorry avoiding this. I'm so sorry <laughs> favorite movie Movie that, the movie that made you fall in love with movies. Damn. Uh, it's, so, it's so boring. It pro- the, it's probably Eternal Sunshine. Eternal it, Sunshine. It, that's how you beat me. Uh, it, <laughs> it's not it's, boring I don't at all. It's great. Know, or it's just like one of the most obvious ones. I, it, for our generation, I don't think it was the first movie that made me fall in love, but it was the one that just like really really sealed the deal. And, and it, That's yours as well? Um, yeah. Or The other one I was thinking about the other day is Wizard of Oz. it was actually a TV. <laughs> it was an episode of TV. Um, called Future Presidents of the United States and my brother and all his best friends made this show and I was so jealous and it looked so fun and it made me want to make movies and I kind of fell in love with movies by like uh, as the jealous little brother you know so they did a great job they changed my life with that show favorite Jamie Lee Curtis uh, role that is in Everything Everywhere uh, it's probably Fish Called Wanda. That's, that's uh, yeah, I mean, I just that movie is so. I I, I watched it later on in my life because uh, Zach Stoltz, our VFX supervisor, um, told us it was like one of his favorite movies ever, and so he sat us down, we watched it together, and I was like, this is so fun. Um, every 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 performance is hilarious and weird and, and stupid in the, in a way that I think is really great, and they don't really make movies like that anymore, and so yeah, that's the first one that comes to mind for me. Maybe I'll just say Halloween one. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> like I've watched clips of it since knowing her, and yeah. it's so surreal and fun to, to just go back see. and rewatch. Yeah, it, yeah. Uh, it's just so fun. Yeah, mine is True Lies, but it's okay. Oh, true. Uh, I mean that Mich- dance scene is whoa. Michelle Yeoh. I, I mean, the first time I saw her, you know, Super Cop. It was um, mm. we actually rented it from Blockbuster. That movie actually ma- made its way to U.S. distribution, and we watched it um, at my godmother's house. And I remember, like, who is that? <laughs> you know, because yeah. we, we, we were used to Jet Li and Sam O Hung and Jackie Chan, um, but I'd never seen Michelle up until that point. And um, the, some of the stunts she was doing, I just could not believe that she was doing them. Um, and because she's, she's so beautiful and delicate looking, and then you watch her move, and um, it's just unbelievable. And she's so funny in it, and yeah. just like totally holds her own against yes. Jackie. And, yeah, uh, yeah. She's <laughs> that one's mine too. Oh, okay, okay. Well, I'll. I also call it Crashing Tiger just because I rewatched it recently. That's and my it's answer. Holy yeah. crap. It's the right answer. <laughs> holy crap. It's yeah. so good. And she's so good. Um, I love the fight scene with um, Zhang Ziyi where they're, they're picking up different, every single possible martial arts weapon. Yeah. Because um, it's like funny too. It's really well executed, but there's a sense of humor. There's that moment where she picks up the, the Michelle picks up the giant, um, yeah. whatever. I don't know what the weapon, weapons are called, called. And she just like gives up on it because it's like too heavy. I was like, oh. Ang Lee, you're, you're being funny. Yeah. I like it. <laughs> My uh, final question for you guys, and I've enjoyed just being around you guys 
uh, the whole season. And I, as much as I want you to continue to just make movies together, um, I have a dream of you guys making the sequel to Team America World Police or the live action version <laughs> of South Park bigger, longer, and un- uncut. Like, I think wow. you guys just have such. <laughs> I want you guys to do some amazing things here. Um, but I have to get uh, cheesy for a minute. Oh, okay. Those are two of my favorite musicals. Uh, so, yeah. South Park is actively. One of the best musicals. Yeah, I know the entire Team America soundtrack by heart. Yeah, I literally <laughs> just it free. I literally just uh, watched it the other day. And my twelve year old came in the room. She's like, "Ooh, can I watch this with you?" I was like, "No, no sorry, <laughs> no." I know it's puppets, but yeah, no, Aww. you're not. Uh, I miss you more than Michael Bay missed the mark when he made Pearl Harbor. <laughs> that last oh, song. Acoustic version. It is so good. Uh, it is. It is the best. Welcome to MTV Unplugged. <laughs> yes. Uh, sentimental. Yeah. See, tell me what you love the most about the other one? This guy? Mm. I mean, I think the thing that Shiner has given me and a lot of the people around him is, uh, he's a, he says this a lot of time, he's a cheerleader. But he also, I think what he does is he sees potential in people in a way that is like not conventional. He's always looking for the thing that no one else is looking at and, and waters that. And for someone like me who just never had any... <laughs> you are so funny. Just, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, right. Yeah. Fucking bullshit. No, 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 you say you say it's okay. No, no, he, 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 that's a cough. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. It sounded like he was laughing at he's your like, dumb answer. Like, <laughs> no, go, go ahead. Yeah, right. Uh, I don't even know what I was saying anymore. Well, yeah. oh, for someone who me who like really struggled with um, self esteem. You're doing a great job. <laughs> <laughs> this guy you're laughing. So good. I love your answer, man. That was your time. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Your turn to laugh at us. Um, but f- as someone who has struggled with self-esteem most of my life, um, I would never, I would never become a director if it wasn't for him seeing something in me that I couldn't have seen. And so, um, yeah. And you know, this, mm-hmm. we, we've changed each other's life. There's no way, like, I don't know what, where we, we would be right now if we mm-hmm. hadn't like first started doing this together, but yeah, that's what I'm, I'm very grateful for. Yeah. You know. It's unreal. This weird friendship, <laughs> like. Like you mentioning the five, you know, other nominees, et cetera, we were talking about the other day, like like directing duos are rare, uh, but they're usually uh, married or related. Yeah, sure. Um, and we're just friends. <laughs> just friends. We're Damn. Just, we're just, <laughs> but, Sorry, Dan. But like, <laughs> it's, we're just friends, and that's uh, huge. Friends yeah. are huge. Like, that's like, friends are life-changing. Like, yeah. like they, they're uh, as important as friends, as uh, wives and Parents, you know, it's a family like, you choose. Best yeah. friends, you know. Yeah. Um, that reminds me. I'll let you answer, but this just reminds me about of about a boy. I don't. I just want to plug about a boy because okay, I'm like, uh, it's so fun because it starts off as a rom com, and you're like, oh, the guy's gonna meet the girl, and the the ending is like, two is not enough. That's the that's the, that's where it goes. Like two people are not enough. You need more people, otherwise, um, the whole thing falls apart. So it's a rom com that is basically saying you need a lot of people around you. It takes a village to survive or whatever. Hmm. Um, and anyways, I just wanted to plug that because I was like... There's also a plug to get Tony Collette in your next movie, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean... So it's <laughs> perfectly okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, big fan of the movie. Yeah. But I, I think that's another thing that, that Shiner always advocates for is just uh, community. The stronger awesome. the, our community, the, the more we can um, the more we can do. In mm-hmm. that. And this movie awesome. is proof of that. Mm-hmm. Okay, your turn. your turn. Go. I came up with different answers every like 30 seconds for the last two Ooh, minutes. Say them all. Uh, no. here's, here's my new answer. Like, uh, I love Dan Kwan's like uh, vulnerability. Like, and it like is something that kind of blossomed over the last like twelve or thirteen years that we've known each other. But like, just the, you know, we started reading about screenwriting and being like, put yourself into it, explore real things, and like the crazy risks that he's taken in what he's written. Uh, that's then changed my life. And then the crazy risks of getting out here and talking about it and being like, I'm gonna talk about mental health, I'm gonna talk about ADHD, I'm gonna talk about you know the immigrant experience in ways that are like, uh, honestly, like I clam up sometimes in settings like this. And I'm so inspired by and grateful for your <laughs> like, <laughs> like crazy, shocking, terrifying vulnerability because I think that like, you know, uh, is like such a, Yeah, I mean, that's the secret sauce of all of our movies. That's why we're here right now.